Good morning, good morning. Once again, it's time for the Mara'al Sunday School Hour. Uh, we start this at 9.30 each Sunday morning to 10.15. Um, you are welcome to come and draw in art and join us on our live stream. But I would rather have you here in the service so you can ask questions more. Uh, we'll reckon with each of to teach our Sunday school. He's taking a break today, amen. But God, he is able. So uh, we are, we're in the last lesson of this quarter. Next quarter, we have new books. And those who desire a Sunday school book need to come out and, uh, and pick up a Sunday school book. And it is a, it is, it's a good thing of literature. So uh, come out and do that. So this morning I, I will be teaching the uh, Sunday School uh, lesson and it will come out of Revelation and 22nd uh, chapter, I guess, 22nd chapter. And, and, the, and the title of this lesson, this title of this lesson is Alpha and Omega. Now we know that in the book of Revelation is the only prophetic book in the Bible, the only book of prophecy in the New Testament, it has to do with the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what uh, is going to occur. A lot of times, Revelation can be a difficult book for some of us, especially new Christians, because the middle of it has a lot of symbolism in it of concerning uh, what's going to happen. But the beginning and the end are pretty practical and pretty straight forth. And so uh, that's what we're going to be uh, dealing with. And, and so it, it, it tells us about what to expect when the Lord comes. And we need to know what's going to expect of us when the Lord comes. Many people have been misled by uh, predictions and things that the world's only on this day. And we really don't know what day it's going to come on. But this this morning, as this lesson once again, Alpha and Omega, and the that note of the Greek, Alpha is the beginning, Omega is the end. It says, and it says here, uh, the quote, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We know that John, as John was called John the Revelator, is the person who is writing this, but he is being uh, spoken to by the angels and the Lord to write these things down so that we will know what God expects of, of us when he returns again. And so the, the scriptures we have is, is coming out of, once again, the book of Revelation chapter uh, 22, starting in verse Six, uh, and it says, it says unto me, um, excuse me, Forgive me. Uh, I have it on the lesson here on my floor. All right, let's go start over again. I apologize for the people. The Lamb worthy of worship, worthy of worship. Hallelujah. We come out of Revelation 6 and 6. Uh, we ready next week already, it seems like, but anyway, Revelation 6 and 6. We're, we're talking about. Lamb worthy of worship, worthy of worship. That is out of Revelation chapter 5, verses 
6 through 14. And I go to Texas. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Revelation 5 12. And our lesson today, what we're looking to do today, is to gain insight into the heavenly worship of the Lamb. Our principle, which means the main thought, is to understand the implications of that heavenly worship for our worship here and now. Application. We need to apply this. We take all these lessons and things. We need to apply them to our daily practice. In other words, we need to apply them to our life. To honor and praise God and the Lamb of God above all else. It says in our, in our, in our, in our scriptures, we'll do this and then we'll move on. It said, And behold, and I beheld, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy, take the book to open the seals. Thereof thou waste slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue, people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands and thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, strength, and honor, glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen, and the four twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever. And this is John the Revelation. John is seeing this, uh, this, uh, I would say this revelation, as they say, the, the revelation of the book needs to be revealed. And God has, and John is seeing these these uh, images, these, 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 these dreams, not dreams, I would not say, but John is receiving these, uh, 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 God reveals unto us what is going to be happening. He's taking a glimpse into the, what the heaven is going to be like. All right. And so we had talked about what, what this would be. And once again, I apologize. I, I had more details in the second lesson. But it, it says that, that we are to understand the implications of the heavenly worship for our worship here and now. Application of making a daily practice to honor and praise God and the man of God above all else. In the revelation, for God is declared worthy to receive glory and honor and power, because He created everything for His own pleasure. When we think of the way mankind dishonors God, this passage assures us that everything will resolve to the point where God is given all praise. Amen. It says the Lamb, the Lamb, we talk about the Lamb, we talk about Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Jesus Christ Him. Brother, Mr. Bob, I'm going to need your help because I, <laughs> I slipped on this one. But it, anyway, it says the word of the Lamb is worth in, in, the, in the first five verses of this chapter, in the first, it, is it, 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 the, the, we see that it's mighty important book of scrolls in the hand of God on his throne. The scroll is like this. We say the book of scrolls it has something written in it. And the question comes from anonymous strong name. We don't know the name's name, we don't know it's Gabriel, who asks who is worthy to open this very important document. No one is found worthy. When they talk about opening this document, the scroll was sealed up. 
sometimes scrolls were written and, and they were important. They would be sealed with the with the insignia of the wax or something of that nature, and that no one can open it. So this document is sealed up. Somebody needs to open it and know what's being read. John is there, and John is, is waiting for the, the revelation of what's on this scroll. But it is not a when the lamb is in John's vision, he proves worthy and, and takes the book, okay? In other words, the lamb, Jesus Christ, is worthy and takes the book. This triggers worship. Triggers me, it starts worship of the lamb by the four beasts and the 24 uh, elders. These are the visions that John saw occupying heaven. These were the roots that, uh, in, in, in the vision he had. He says that it, 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 it triggered worship. In other words, worship began by those that John had seen of the Lamb. The Lamb was slain and had redeemed the elders and the countless hosts from all humanity by his blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He has, he has elevated them to be kings and priests who will reign on the earth in heaven now, but they will uh, be worthy. They will be worthy of reign of Worthy of a note are the golden vials full of prayers of the saints. These vials are, are full of the prayers. Our prayers have gone up to them. Our un unsuppressed prayers that we offer according to the will of God have not been forgotten. They have been presented before the throne of God. We yet will yet be answered. Uh, you have a comment on the prayer part. Uh, uh, I do have a comment, but I want you to, as I mentioned it, just open the door for you to kind of elaborate on it. Uh, back here where it says, back here where it says, it says, the Lamb is worship. It says, when the Lamb, when the Lamb in John's vision proves, when it proves worthy and takes the book, this triggers worship of the Lamb, but until, until that, until the Lamb uh, became worthy. See, at first they looked around, there was no one worthy to, uh, to open the scroll, to open the book, correct, pass it on the scroll. But what I was thinking about, the Lord, the Lord, if He had to, then how about us? He had to prove Himself worthy to open the book, and then once he proved himself worthy, it triggered among everyone what? They worshiped him. They worshiped the Lamb. In other words, he did something to cause someone to, uh, us to respect, to honor, to praise, to do all those things, to go to the, to go and to pray to him. And we ask, even though we're not Jesus Christ, that kind of tells me, Pastor Norman, certainly we also, we can't expect someone to uh, think of us a certain way if we don't prove ourselves to be. You see what I'm saying? Yes, we, we have to understand something that, as, as he said in this part of, in this part of the lesson, even though it's Jesus Christ himself, when he was proven worthy, that's when worship was instigated. But we ourselves, we as the children of God, if we want to be respected by other people, we need to earn their respect. If I was a sinner and I became to the Lord, then I need to change my ways so I will have the respect of those that I need. If you want to be respected, you need to be worthy of the respect. If you're going to call yourself a child of God and want people to say that you are a child of God, then you got to show them that you are a child of God. You need to die that respect. And so, and so when he says Jesus is worthy of worship, that if God sees this, this, this moment, and but then he realizes that he is worthy to open up the seal because he became worthy, he, they know he's worthy, then worship begins. If we want to respect the other saints of God, then we've got to prove that we deserve the respect of those saints of God. That, I mean, we, we should not be uh, uh, lifting folk up who not at that point in time ready to be lifted up. You know, right? you, we, you, you, you 
got to prove yourself in the church. You can't come into church and it's not by seniority. Some seem to think respect comes through seniority. I've been in church 20 some years. Some think respect comes by uh, uh, involvement. I'm on the usher board, I'm on the choir, I'm on the end It's not what, how much you do, it's not how long you've been. It's what you are, it's what you have in you that people will respect. Right. Then, then, then you can have some respect. Yes. There, there, there's saints who've been in church 10, 15 years and won't demand respect. They, but they've been mean-spirited all those 15 years and no, nobody's going to respect it. But then if somebody come in for six months and they, the sweetest and kindest person uh, uh, resembling what God is, and they get respect. So the great multitude includes the rest of every being person, the elders, many angels, the four beasts, everything great, ten and thousand angels say with a loud voice, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. This 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 seven of denoting fulfillment and completeness is response to the Lamb's perfection. Seven horns represent all power. Seven eyes represent all vision or not. We learn that the scroll contains prophecies of God's judgments on sin right up to the end. We see God's justice and mercy and forgiveness with all those who trust him. Those who trust him. We've got to put our trust in God and no one else. You can't put your trust in man. You can't put your trust in material thing. You've got to put your trust in God. God. We did see every creature in heaven and earth echoing the same praise and arms forever and ever. Revelation 5, the four beasts say amen, which means so be it. So be it. All those who uh, thus bless God are being, are being and will be blessed themselves. Amen. The appropriate answer to our hearts to this revelation is praise and worship. Much of worship is saying back to God from our hearts what we know to be true of him. We thank him for all that he is and does. We have to understand, we, we determine something, the terminology of, 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 of praise and worship is that we, we sometimes, I think, we misunderstand that. They think praise is jumping around for 30 minutes, singing a whole bunch of fast songs and all that, you know, and, 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 and then, then we get into worship and we have a prayer that's about an hour long, and that, that's not that's not praise and worship. The praise and worship praise is coming in and giving God thanks for what He's done in your life and what He's going to do. To the others, we think praise and worship is jumping up. It's, it's not emotion, it's about a relationship. Amen. It's, it's about relationships. If you have relationship with God, and then you'll be able to uh, understand and be able to give praise because you know who he is and what he means to you. We have to understand this. It's all right to be most. Don't get past the wrong, wrong, wrong. If you, the Lord tell you to run around the church or jump up and down and speak in tongues, I have no problem with that. Right? I have no problem with that. But you know what? Don't, 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 don't give me all that on Sunday. But on Monday, you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing. I know, and I'm not, I, I was thinking to this to me, but I, I was talking about somebody said about um, that he chose their past and I don't deliver. That kind of word me for me, they say, I don't deliver. And I'm thinking, what did that mean? Like, it must be because what emotion enough, I'm more of a teacher than a moving and a hollering person. But that's all right, I have no problem with that. Because if you could not spite the bill and do something on Sunday, Okay, that's, I mean, you know, he, he don't bring it, don't bring it. He, he didn't bring it. You know, no, I don't say he's not going to do all that. And that's why the Lord sent me still. I can't say it. Right. That, that's my limit. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a pastor, know my gifts and my limitations of my gifts. Amen. But, but what I'm saying is, I'm not here to bring it. I'm here to deliver the word of God to you. So that on Mondays, you have something to stand on. 
You can shout all you want on Sunday, but what you gonna do on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Amen. And then my father, Reverend Howard, he, he had this saying I never forgot. He said, Don't shout higher than you live in. Amen. Amen. And you shout and talk, and then I, I catch it apart and I cuss with somebody else. Don't, don't shout higher than you live in. Amen. You know something, Pastor? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just one thing. Yeah. 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 Say something. Go ahead. Uh, it said, just what you were saying, just to back up what you were saying, it says here, it says, much of worship is saying back to God from our hearts what we know to be true of Him. Mm -hmm. So, and I said it to say this, a lot of times, I don't have a problem with all, you know, someone moving or whatever they want to do, but a lot of times we get. These things have been taught, taught from one man to another. These things have been things that we have saw and we have, you know, we have learned from other people. And so we mimic those things, we, we mimic those things, and we mimic them, and they become entertaining. And so when we see someone the danger in that right here is when we see someone that preaching the word or teaching the word, and maybe it might might not be with excitement, then we miss out because we're looking for something that has no power. And see, also because if you back here, it says he was worthy, but he wasn't just worthy of the people. But he became worthy to have what? To have power. The Lamb became worthy to have power, riches, honor, all those things, so that when he prayed, God he had heard him. Mm -hmm. He could hear him. And so it wasn't just it wasn't just a show. So it ain't about the way and how good or who can out hoop somebody or who can out preach somebody or I sound or I sound better than you or you sound better than me. Is he teaching the word of God? And how is he living, like you said? How do you see, how is his life, does his life, don't even know who's not perfect, does his life represent Jesus Christ? When I see him, how do you, does he live? When I see the pastor, or when I see this person, this thing is he out to love to be. Doing this on Sunday, but on Monday, like you say, he's doing something that doesn't match what he's saying here on Sunday. You make up a good point, especially part going back over a bunch of verses saying back to God from our hearts what we know to be true of Him. In other words, we, we praise God sometimes not because He's done something for us. We praise Him because of who He is and the relationship we have with Him. If God had done nothing for this week, we still should be able to praise Him because He may not have done this week, but next week is going to come coming around and something going to happen. That he's going to deliver you from something. So we, we need to be ready to praise God no matter what the situation is. And we get full, we have to understand that, 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 that don't, don't get me wrong, I know sometimes it can be a, a little cliche, but we got to learn to praise God when things ain't going our way a lot of times. Because if you praise him, blessings come up, you know. You know some blessings come down. You praise no blessings come down. You won't be blessed, praise God, even in the midst of your trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. We got to stop praising God just when things are going good for us. But He's never said that everything is going to be a bed of roses. It's going to have some thorns in your life every once in a while. So we got we to gotta remember to, to praise Him. When I, I preached about my time in the mercy room, that Lord showed me you ain't as bad off as you thought you was. This is what's going on with these other folk around you. And too many times we, we forget this other folks who like to be in your shoes. And we, 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 we forget that. But God is God. We got to praise as He say, and, 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 and He is worthy. We already showed that He is worthy. So we got to understand that. So, or uh, what you're saying to us, Pastor Norman, that, yeah, like you were just saying right now, God reminded you of what you have and who He is. And so, and that He reminded you that, I'm here, I ain't been nowhere because of your circumstances. Your circumstances is not more powerful 
there's me at all. And so, but when God says those things, it's like when we hear in the scripture, the pastor moment, count it all joy. Uh, and we say we should pray to God. No, when God says those things and tells us to do those things, doesn't it mean that He may have made those things available to us when it comes to getting to know Him through relational? We, 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 if we have a relationship with God, we'll understand God and His ways much better, as you say, because of the relationship we have with Him. If we have a relationship with God, we can understand what God wants us, what God will do for us, and what we need to do for God. We, we, and another thing is, you know, we, we got to stop thinking of having a one-sided relationship with God. It's all on Him and nothing on us. We have some obligations. We have some things God has told us to do that we must do. We can't use God as an ATM machine. Every time we want something, we're going to put a little Jesus card in there, and he's going to send something out to it. Yeah. And you know what? you got to have a card first to put in there before you can get anything out of it. Right, right. You can go to the ATM machine all you want to and say, your man, ain't nothing coming out unless you have the card. Yeah. My card is Jesus. I don't need a blessing. I'm Jesus. And, you know, it's not about nothing else. But I don't know. Because he was given 
that authority. And so John they saw a strong man, he never forget who it is, who is worthy to open up and to lose the seals thereof. We aren't told that I did this strong man, but it may be able since his name means God is my strength. The answer may come back that no one in the universe, no man in heaven nor earth, and even earth, was able to open the door to our even look inside. And nobody can open it but Jesus. And death and everything in heaven works, especially John, were concerned that no one was able to open the in the book. This is John what really and no one was found to open. At that point, one of the elders, one of the elders of Mount Christ, God from from John that Christ, the line of Judah, and the root of David had already gained the right to open up the book and break the seals. Verse 5, for John could stop reading. John was wondering, who, who's going to break the seals? Who do we have? Who is worthy? And they informed John, one has already been found worthy. And that worthy was Jesus. He has been found. He, he had authority. He, he fulfilled what God had put him on this earth. His ministry fulfilled. He did what God and the Father had required of him. So he had authority given by God. John stopped crying because there's one here who can take care of this situation. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we got to stop crying and understand there's someone who can take care of this situation. Amen. Don't don't get the, don't I'm not I'm not citing the crying mother in that verse, but I'm crying too. Amen. But but there's somebody who's worthy to take care of. And it says in, in Revelation, one of my favorite, he will dry the tears from your eyes. He'll wipe the tears from your eyes. Imagine all you know, yes, but another But um, when you said that he was, the king had given him authority, okay, God had given him authority, and we know the question is, why was he able to give him the authority? What did he have to do to get the authority? Then you talk about how, you know, Jesus Christ, you don't just, come and give, say as a pastor, you don't come and give someone authority to do certain functions. They have to do what? Earn it. Earn it. Just as I mean, you have to earn it. Even, you know, we as back when the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus earned what all the authority he was given when he fulfilled the mission and ministry that he was given by the Father. And, you know, we see Jeremiah says, Lord, send me when he needed to stay, he said, Lord, I'll go. Remember in the garden of sin, he said, be your will, let this cup pass from me. He, 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 that's the human side of him saying that. Right. But the God side said, I need to do this to fulfill the promise of my father that the, 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 the serpent would be bruised. And so he, he got authority because he had to fulfill what he had to, was able to do. We understand, we, if we if we were obedient and, and did what God has asked us to do, we would be, we have authority too. Well, I prayed to ask the Norman and, and, and you know, that happened. Well, you know, prayer is more than words. That's and right. When, when, when we, we say we pray, and I say, you know, okay, pray, but you gotta have relationship to pray. You gotta know where the, the power of the prayer is coming from. And Pastor Don, I have no power to grant your prayer request. But the power comes from who? God Himself, from Jesus, and Jesus Himself. If you say my prayer is asked, you gotta check your relationship with God. He said, if it's in my will. Sometimes we pray for things and it's not in His will. And you can pray all you want to. If it's not in His will, He's not going to receive it. Amen. I, I see people do crazy prayers like they, they somebody don't like in the church. Lord, you know I don't like her. Right. So let her slip and fall, break her hand. God ain't going to answer that kind of mess. You might slip and fall. God ain't going to answer that kind of mess. That's not in His will. Yeah, we do crazy stuff. You have something else. Yeah, I, I mean, just like what you were saying, we're talking about. See, we, we see how 
the Lord died for the sins of the world, correct? He was worthy to open the scroll, correct? He was worthy to, and he had power to receive the power, right? So he received power, and he changed things that were dead that couldn't be fixed. He was able to fix those things. And so when I say this, to say this, though we're not God, we're not God, we're God's children, but he has given us, according to Matthew, the 28th chapter, he has given us authority, but that authority comes by through the way we live our life, through the way we live our lives. So when I say to say this, we can change a situation if we're, be, if we're willing to lay down some things in our life, if we're willing to sacrifice some things in our lives, then we can change. We can see that our kids are, you know, a family situation. But we can change the situation, though it might not come really quick, because in the lesson, it says, some that plan, just because the answer doesn't come real quick, don't mean that it's not coming. But we got to know that if we're striving to do that, which is pleasing to God, then, and we're about His business, then that which we can't fix over there, our children and other things, God has the power. He's given us the authority to fix it by the way we live our lives. He said, if I be lifted up, I was wrong. And that's why Paul, and, I, and I'll finish here, that's why Paul was so adamant, and I always say this, he said, First of all, I want to know him in the power. See, I can't have power if I don't know him. Acts the 19th chapter proved that Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You don't have no power. And then so when we try to pray for someone or pray over our situations or we're trying to uh, uh, cast something out of whatever it is in Jesus' name, but our life is not pleasing to God, and we're dealing with this situation. That's why those situations take us to places that God never intended us to take us. Take us to. We're stressed out. We're mad. We're, we're mad at God. We're complaining. We're doing all those things because we haven't been our part. We just want wait a minute, God. I don't want to be responsible for nothing. You got it. Won't you just say? I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to see nobody right. I don't want to live right. I don't want to do just do this, God. That's all I need you to do. Don't ask me no questions. We, as I said earlier, we 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 believe this one side relationship with God. It's all on Him and none on us, as you point out. But we have an obligation to live right and be obedient. Now I didn't say we could not help and and and, and get people healed and stuff. But to be healed, you have to have the power to heal that. And to get that power, you have to have a relationship with God. You, you, it's just like you said, you, you know, you've got, all, you've got a microwave and everything. It does wonderful, marvelous things. And, and, you know, it just helps y'all do that. But if it ain't plugged into the wall, it ain't going to do nothing for you. If, it, if it's not getting any power, I don't care what you got. You can push all the buttons you want. There's nothing going to happen. When you go pray for somebody, you ain't got no power behind your prayer. Your prayer ain't going nowhere. And the way you get power is through the Holy Spirit to have a relationship with Jesus. Come on, somebody. Some, tell me y'all know some folks y'all go to say, pray for me. And, and, and you pass up other folks because you say, oh, no, mm, I, I need somebody to give them a, a real prayer for me. Y'all laugh, but you know it's the truth. <laughs> You, you, just as brother as Mr. Bobby said, some of y'all don't like some folks leaving you can say, no, 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 let me go to the next few. But the, the, we, we can pray for situations and ask God to interfere in everything. But to do that, you've got to have, as you say, a relationship with God so that He will guide you. Now, it says here, we in the, we in the, in the time of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guides us and everything. And we need to pray in the Holy Spirit uh, and, we, uh, and, 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 and follow His direction. We have to, we have to understand that as what the Bible says, the little scripture gave you about uh, 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 Paul, I know, uh, Jesus, I know, but who are you? 
If you don't know God, uh, the Holy Spirit, you, the, you, that's what the thing that I say to you is the Spirit say, who, who are you? I ain't got no respect for you. Why? Because you ain't got nobody I'm scared of. But if you have a relationship with God, you have power. All you gotta know is to tap into it. Keep plugged into it. And God will do marvelous things for you. We're about to close this minute. I think this would be a help me out. I got a little ahead of myself. But we were talking about the Lamb, this lesson about the Lamb being worthy or worthy. We're talking about Jesus Christ. And it shows us at the beginning of the outline, it says, it says that when he had the authority of power to open the seal, that's when worship began. It recognized he had power and uh, authority. All right. They didn't wait until he opened the seal. He, 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 he said they had, he had the authority. He, he didn't open all the seals at once, but he began to open. So they knew he had authority uh, and, and, and power. We have power through the Holy Spirit. And one thing I mentioned, he said, I, I want everybody to understand, we're going to close this, that sometimes when we pray, we get upset because our prayer does not get answered in the time we want it to be answered. Just because you say, Pastor, I'm praying for oh, this weekend, and nothing has happened. Well, that's a week. How long did Jesus wait for you to show up in church? You've been in, you, you've been out of church for twenty years. You show up to one God and ask your prayer in a week. He might be saying something. You know, let me see what waiting is all about. And another thing, sometimes God is answering your prayer. And listen, just because you don't see anything going on in front of your two eyes or in your life. Don't, uh, does not mean God's not working on that person you're praying for or some situation around me. I, I've learned in my life, in my 70 some years, that God works in very mysterious ways sometimes. My, my witness, we don't close. When my daughter was sick that day, I told her, I prayed God to heal her just like that, Sister so But you know what God showed me? He did it in time. Because when she came out of it, she had no, nothing left. She, she was just. Just woke up with no after effects, no nothing. Now, if I told her I rushed it through God's so hey, here she is. And she might have to me with some serious illness or something like that. But she woke up just as normal as when it happened to her. So what? So you need to leave God alone and say, God is in your time and your will. Amen. And let him deal with that. Amen. Yeah. As Mr. McGee said, and this one thing, God was patient with you. Be patient with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, he can do it in a minute. Yes, he can do it in a day. Yes, he can do it in a week. But each and every one of us is different. God knows what you need. Don't judge your response to God by somebody else's response. Right. Well, uh, he answers the verse prayer in two days. You don't know what's the verse been going through. Get to those two days. And I'll be waiting on a week. Well, since the verse you needed two days, you needed a week. What can difference make as long as you both get what you need? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow it. As Father God, we thank you for our lesson. I thank my brother, Mr. McGee, for coming back early. And you would also know I needed his help this morning, Father. So, Father, as we go further in our service, we pray for we pray for a wonderful time in the world today, Father, in the word. We thank you, Father. We thank you for our Sunday school hour. We pray for the ministry requirements to us. We pray for all the ministry. We pray for our church as a whole. We pray as we go forth in your name, Father, in your power, in your authority, Father, that you will bless this church. So, Father, we praise you. We give you honor and glory forever. Amen.